For today's shave, we're going to be using Uncle John's Bay Rum and the Boker Beast. Stick around. <laughs> Duty shavers, it's been a good minute, probably three months. Um, been busy as a one arm coat hanger here lately between um, getting my son, my oldest son, running around to some college visits to find out ballpark where he wants to go as of next year. Um, he's been looking at some schools to wrestle at, so I took him up to the University of Southern Maine when we were on vacation. Smart play there. Um, that was one that he's really leaning towards, and uh, we took him to Muskingum University, which is in uh, southeastern Ohio and then just recently we took him to Waynesburg University which is in it's about an hour south of Pittsburgh so I think that's the one he's leaning towards so um, good opportunity at any which school to um, to wrestle in a, at a collegiate level so any which way we're not here to talk about that um, I do have some stuff to tell you about a little recent trip I went on but for today um, I'm going to be going to something, it's, it may be old to a bunch of you, it's new to me. Um, I've really grown to really like Uncle John's, and we're going to go with Uncle John's Bay Rum, okay? Um, I had, when I grew the beard last year, I got the mustache wax in this scent, and I loved it. And I said, as soon as I get back to shaving again, I'm going to pick this stuff up. And I picked up this and another one. Probably going to order one more set, so, and we'll also have the matching aftershave as well. So, um, today, uh, we're going to be using, okay, I got a little horror story to show you guys here. This is very depressing. The last time I shaved, Sunday night, this happened. My Savile Row, the badger hair came out of it when I was cleaning it up. After shaving, you know, I, I only use warm water, don't use hot, I'm not real vigorous with the thing or anything else, but it was pretty depressing to see that happen to an expensive brush. So I'm going to see if I can get a, a new knot put in this, but I am in no way capable of doing that myself, so you can bet I'm going to be sourcing that out. But any which way. So since that is on the, the shelf for the time being, I'm going to be using this it's another real nice silver tip Frank shaving brush. So I believe this is a 26 millimeter. Not sure. I got it from Murphy and McNeil. It was used like one time and somebody didn't like it. So without further ado, and like I said, I don't normally face lather, but um, I am going to do it today just because, I mean, if I use that Savile Row, I face lather. I don't bull lather with that thing. But um, I found with Uncle John's, it's very similar to hold tight guys sorry about that my little girl had a question and I wasn't sure what she was gonna ask so just figure it's safer to answer than to not so um, so that I don't wear like directional stuff in the brush I constantly switch directions so um, like uh, oh what is it Holy cow, I've noticed that uh, this soap, I'm just, you're better to use a lot of it than a little. So, um, I mean, this one, unlike holy cow, is very fairly priced. I believe this shave soap here is $17, $18. Um, I mean, you can jump on his website, I'll link it below. But uh, that should, I'm guessing, be enough. Um, so, we'll roll with this. I'm going to wet the face real quick. And I think for the first pass, I'll hang that guy up. Oh yeah, and so the razor for today, sorry, will be Ryan Moore's recreated Bizarre de Velasco Boker Beast. Um, you can kind of see the engraving on it here. This is made by the Boker Company for a small shop in Manila, Bizarre de Velasco. So, hence the name. But, uh, yeah, so continue wetting the face, and I am way out of practice with doing this, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> I've been just trying to get back into a groove of not only 
straight razor shaving. I've been using the, um, uh, the hell is it? Um, Wex Sexto Blade. I've been using that quite a bit here lately just out of sheer convenience from not having time to strop razors, but just recently, today, I stropped probably seven razors, got kind of back in the groove, so I was kind of happy with myself because I'd just never been making the time to do so. And I'd much rather shave with a straight razor than the Shavette, but the convenience of the Shavette does definitely come in handy at times. I mean, I took it on vacation. You know, you get a good shave with it, but I'm not going to take a strop or my razor, my straight razors on a trip when I can just conveniently take that. So I'm going to dunk this just a little bit, try and thin this out just a little. Like I said, I don't normally face lather, so this could take just a minute. <laughs> So I appreciate your patience and bearing with me. So, back to what I was about to say. Um, my uh, oldest three and I just got back today from a, it was less than a 48 hour turnaround or damn near 48 hour turnaround between leaving my home in Worcester, Ohio, driving out to Boston. My kids and I caught a game at Fenway Park last night and we were supposed to stay the night and leave this morning, but my kids just kind of got the inkling, let's just head home now. So, um, as much as I wanted to see the Red Sox win, it wasn't in the cards yesterday. So, but it was exciting to, for my daughter to be at her first game and my boy's first pro baseball game in probably, I want to say, about eight years. So, to kind of see the looks on their faces going into the oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball, and, you know, Fenway Park is just a museum that's constantly writing its own history. So, um, if, if any of you are contemplating going, I would say go for it. It is, by far and away, one of the most amazing baseball experiences I've ever had. Um, you know, I mean, aside from Boston not winning, uh, it was very fun to say the least. So, now that we're seven minutes in, we'll get to shaving. I'm just going to do two passes today, so... Hopefully shouldn't be too lengthy of a video. And this razor is just amazing when it comes to not only the weight, because I believe this is a 15 16 but it also just, it covers a lot of real estate and it just mows through everything. So Ryan put one hell of an edge on this thing. You basically just have to let the weight of the razor do the work with this because like I said it's a heavy blade um, I mean heavy comparatively speaking to you know some of the gold dollars you have or even a shavette for example the problem that some people run into with say a gold I mean a shavette rather is that they they tend to push it and that's where all of a sudden you end up really gouging yourself because you've still got to be very patient and let the razor do the work. Now granted, when they're a light razor, it's a lot more of a delicate situation, just in my opinion. I mean, some people, um, a good buddy of mine, John Bonham, he prefers like the 3 8 4 8 5 8 I guess I come from a different school of thought when it comes to... Um, the bigger the razor for me, the more deliberate I can be in, uh, you know, I don't even know how to explain it, but I guess because it's bigger, I see it moving slower, so I tend to be more aware of everywhere it is, as opposed to sometimes with the Shavette, you know, you try and use the same amount of muscle memory and muscle control with a bigger razor, or with the small razor that you do with this, 
and that's when you end up gouging yourself. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off again, and this is kind of where, what I mean about getting out of order. I usually here to here, here to here, and you notice I started going across. I guess I was still too happy about telling you my story about Fenway. So, the exciting part of the day, so we we stayed in a real nice neighborhood, and it's probably about, I'd say, every bit of a half hour outside of Boston. So, for any of you Ohio people, it's about the same length as Akron to Cleveland. Well, maybe not quite Akron to Cleveland, but um, definitely probably like Strongsville to Cleveland. It was a really nice area. Um, I didn't have to worry about anything getting broke into in my car. So that was a big plus. So we took the train and um, you know it was probably a 15 minute train ride I'd say. Now um, when you take the train obviously you want to be real aware of your time on the your, your return times. So, with that being said, I knew my final return time on the train was, I believe, 11.42. Well, I double-checked everything at about 9.25. I believe we were in the fifth or sixth inning, and lo and behold, I believe it may have been 9.15, but lo and behold, the last train time was going to be 9.53 for us to catch the train from Ruggles train station to Norwood Depot. So, um, with all of that fun news going down, um, I, uh, my kids and I jumped into action and proceeded to run, pretty much. It was about, it's a 20 minute walk, 22 minute walk, you know, if there's not a whole congested amount of people right there in your face. My kids and I not only got detoured by some guy who was not letting us walk down a certain street and had to go a block and a half around, which added like five minutes to the trip. We left the stadium about 9.25 maybe, and our train had to leave at 9.53. We made it to the station at about 9.48. So, and, and that was just making it to the train station. That's not making it up the stairs, across the the station down the stairs to the platform. So we made it to the platform about three to three minutes to spare maybe. So <laughs> you know um, not exactly my idea of a fun time sprinting but it did make some memories. You know next year we know that we're gonna probably take a bus or something. I, I love the neighborhood that we stayed in. It was real quiet but yet it had all kinds of stuff for us to do before we left for the game. And then while we were at the game, we, or well before the game rather, we, once we got into Boston, we went to Wahlburgers, which is amazing. Um, if you get a chance, definitely check it out. Um, it was a great atmosphere. We were on the patio right outside with a whole bunch of crazy Boston fans getting ready for the game, you know, pre-gamers and everything else. So... Um, I mean, for my kids and I, it was definitely a a uh, a big experience, to say the least. A good buddy of mine from here in Ohio got a hold of me and was jealous and said that the next time we go, which will be next summer, he was insistent upon he's going to go to. So, like, okay, well, the more the merrier. So, he's one of those guys that just a real bubbly, fun guy to hang out, have a few beers with, and um, maybe I'll, maybe buying his ticket will be my wedding present to him, because he's getting married in two weeks. In fact, I'll be at his wedding in two weeks. Eric Bear, if you're watching this, how about this? I'll buy your ticket for the game. You come with us. All right? Now he's got to watch this video. So, now that we're done with that part, I kept BSing. So, I'm going to go against on the neck. Like, yeah, against the grain on the neck, well, I'm just going to go up, okay? Because against the grain on the neck is kind of like this. And then I'm going to go across on the cheeks, and we'll just take care of the mustache any which way we see fit. So, 
with that being said, I think I'm going to get just a little more alum love on my digis, by the way. This is the, uh, the, uh, Phoenix shaving alum block with the, the grip on the side, which is very convenient. So, just to make sure that the digits aren't sliding around, always nice to uh, help stretch your skin for straight razor shaving. For those of you who are contemplating taking it up, that's the most important thing I can say is learn how to stretch your skin. Because you may not understand it first, but you'll definitely thank me later. And like I said, with this razor being much bigger, there's very few strokes you gotta make because it covers a lot of land if you will, real estate, whatever you want to call it. Oh shit, I guess I'm just going against on the face. Because I already started it. And I might have just got the earlobe. I hope I just kissed it and nothing more. We may have laid it open, we'll, just, we'll see. Yeah, with uh... I shaved Sunday night before work. Monday morning is when we left for the Sox game. And then we made it up there Monday night. And, um, and then left Tuesday evening after the game. So it didn't have to be that way. We could have stayed. We could have got back late tonight. But the one thing that we didn't take into account when we made that hotel booking was what kind of... Massachusetts and Connecticut traffic would we run into you know because our path home takes us through um, Hartford Connecticut on the way back and so even if I happen to miss you know I'm just gonna go across on the chin here I'm not gonna be too picky because like I said I shaved three days ago, and this is the first go back at it. I don't want to be putting three passes on the face and beat it up, and I think I just cut myself. If I didn't, I'm very lucky. No, I did. I got myself right there. Nothing bad. It'll stop with some cold water, but... I haven't shaved with this razor in a while, and, um, you know, I guess the using the smaller blade has kind of hindered me a little bit on that. So, I mean, that kind of stuff happens. You saw that nice alum block. That's what's uh, going to help put an end to that. So... So yeah, I mean, you can tell that not only am I way out of practice for um, straight razor shaving in general, but especially doing these videos. Now, going against on the mustache, this is very convenient. So, okay. So, now that I got that done, I, I didn't put you guys on hold before. I'm going to put you on a brief hold while I rinse this stuff up real quick, and we'll be right back. Hang tight. Okay. All righty. Now, we're back. So, like I said, uh, this little spot did stop with just some cold water. Uh, I mean, I did take a, an alum rinse, you know, all over after that. Um, no burning, no nothing. So, obviously, the straight razor didn't overwork the skin. Had I done a third pass, it might have. Um, so, that's why I, I just... I've been trying to maintain a three-pass 
thing, but if I've gone a few days in a row without shaving, I don't want to do it. So, I didn't talk about this enough. I want to take a minute, so <laughs> bear with me here. So, Uncle John's Bay Rum, okay, this is not your typical Bay Rum. This is something I could use absolutely every single day. It is a very different take on Bay Rum, and by that I mean it is a very fresh, clean scent, um, no clove in it. It's just a very pleasant treat. That's just the best thing I can say. It's It smells very clean. It smells like an old school barber shop, if you will. Um, I, To be honest, of, of all of Uncle John's soaps, I think the barber shop one was probably the only one that I wasn't crazy about. So, I mean, that's not to say I didn't like it, but it's this, I think, reminds me much more of a, a barber shop type scent than, than the... Uh, the barbershop uh, itself so but uh, again if you guys haven't tried Uncle John's and this is a very small business artisan okay um, much like my friend SMG John Romanoff um, Uncle John is a very small shop it's, he's a one-man show and he not only makes shave soaps after shaves but he makes beard oils Mustache wax, uh, pre-shave oils, bath, bath bombs, uh, da, 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 wax melts, all of that stuff. So it's it's very much like a, a one-stop shop, if you will. It's it's a, a more small scale than Sterling, obviously. Um, like I said, he's a one-man show in a tiny, probably 800 square foot shop, but. All of this stuff is very reasonably priced. I believe for both of these, it was maybe 38 bucks, not including the shipping, of course. Um, I mean, you know, nobody's going to ship stuff for free unless you're buying a bunch of stuff, so I completely get that. But for for 36, 38 bucks for a soap and aftershave, you really can't go wrong. Um, it, again, I'll link this stuff in the description below so that you can look into it if you're interested but I of all of his scents that I have right now aside from pipe smoke this is right up there okay this color of this thing keeps causing the focus to go out so yeah Uncle John's Bay Rum this stuff I can't say enough good about it um, the performance on this stuff is very good it is a tallow based soap he does have his ingredients uh, yeah, the ingredients are listed on the side right here. Glenn Helly is the one who really turned me on to using Uncle John's products, and you can see there, yeah, it's a tallow based soap, so you kind of get where I'm coming from. I believe he still does have some vegan stuff before he started using tallow in his products, so I mean, it may say on the description. I, I wasn't really picky, I just wanted to try his stuff, and the more I tried it, the more I liked it. So, any which way. So today, um, like I said, we used the Frank shaving brush, because we all saw what happened to the poor Savile Row. But, <laughs> we'll get it fixed one way or another. Um, I'm not going to dwell on it or anything else. But, we used the Savile Row, or the, <laughs> the Frank shaving brush. We used the Boker Beast. This is Ryan Moore from Legacy Razors Recreation. Um, I bought the razor. He fixed it up for me and put an edge on it. So um, between that and then today, the star was Uncle John's Bay Rum. Great stuff. Definitely give it a look. All right. Any which way. I'm hoping to get more back to a, a routine of doing these. So um, I just... I, I thank you guys, any of you who have subscribed to this channel, I really appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. It, it also means a lot for me to be able to not only share my experiences with you as far as shaving, but to tell a funny story like almost missing a train and wondering what the hell do I do in order to get like 15 miles away from town. So, <laughs> but in a, in a town I'm very unfamiliar with too, because like I said, I'm from an hour south of Cleveland. Ironically enough, I like the Red Sox. So, any which way, you guys have a great day, night, whenever. Keep your shaves clean. Keep them wet. Later, guys.